Hello, hello, and welcome back to Retrieving Sanity with your podcast host, Keegan, and this is your podcast for all mental health, addiction, recovery issues, and topics, and today we have a very special guest, and that is Dr. Jeannie May. Did I say that right? You did. You did. Awesome. So, uh, uh, Dr. Jeannie May, uh, what is it that you do? I see that you have a sign behind you that says, The Breath MD. That's it. Absolutely. Um, so I'm actually board certified in um, geriatrics, hospice and addiction medicine. So oh, wow. that's that's my full time job. But um, several years ago, I got exposed to breath work and mm -hmm. uh, it was just mind blowing. And, and since then, um, I've made a commitment that I want to get this out to the world. That this mm. is so much more effective, gets to the root cause in a way that, you know, all the medicines I prescribe every day just don't do. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. So um, what exactly got you into breath work? Uh, was it <laughs> something that was just like you kind of noticed you had a little bit extra energy after taking a deep breath or something or what was it <laughs> no actually um I've, I've always suffered from anxiety it, it's been mm. something that i've dealt with actually since childhood mm -hmm. and um it had always been an issue something kind of quirky i like to do is on my birthday i like to go learn something new so oh. um, several years ago for my birthday i went to phoenix arizona i'd never been there before very nice and I went to a breathwork training course and I had no idea what it was, none mm. whatsoever. I mean, I was, I was familiar with Dr. Andrew Weil and his insomnia technique. Um, I mm. definitely had used that. You know, let's breathe in for four, hold for seven, exhale for eight. And I thought it was going to be more stuff like that, where it's just kind of mm. learning these techniques. And I figured it could help me with my anxiety. It could help my addiction patients with anxiety. Um, mm. But what, what it was, was a transformational somatic breathwork um, journeys, which oh, wow. is completely different. It, it was my, my first 90 minute session was like five years of talk therapy for me. Wow. It was mind blowing. It was because I, I had done decades, literally decades of talk therapy, which I'm not knocking talk therapy. I mean, I have many <laughs> friends who are therapists. It's definitely a very important modality. But mm -hmm. I mean, the deal was I, I understood intellectually what the issue was. Mm -hmm. Crappy stuff happened in my past and it was now affecting my present. Yep, mm -hmm. that's what was going on. I got it. <laughs> but it, it, it was sort of thing that no matter how much I thought about it, I couldn't mm -hmm. make the feeling go away. There was still this this feeling of unease, of something's quite not not quite right. I, I'm just not safe, and I just couldn't get that feeling to go away. Mm -hmm. Then with this breath work, which you know it was just mind blowing. All these emotions just came up, and I felt them, and then they went out and released. And the most amazing thing for me was that I didn't even have to go there. Right. And I didn't have to go back to those past traumas. So that's actually a thing um, in talk therapy, especially with disorders like post-traumatic stress. It actually can make it worse. But you keep going back to the traumatic event. With the breath work, you actually just let the emotions come up, out, and then release. You don't even necessarily have to go back and think about it and process it. You just let it go and it, it lasts. That was the most huh. amazing thing is that, uh, you know, and I, I've done hundreds of breathwork journeys since then. And, you know, healing's a journey. It, it doesn't happen mm. all at one time. And then mm. many layers of the onion. But it, I mean, you know, it is the closest thing to a magic bullet I have ever found. It's amazing. Oh, wow. Yeah. That is, that is really cool. Um, I'm an avid uh, breathwork kind of person myself, so I can totally relate. But you've gone like 20 steps further than like just <laughs> someone doing meditations here and there. So uh, the way that you describe this totally uh, just makes sense to me. And uh, that's amazing that you can do this kind of thing. And a lot of people don't really recognize what breath does for us and how yep. we, it's uh, one of those things that, it's just really interesting to me because there's a lot more that goes on with it. And uh, like you, I also uh, suffer with anxiety. And so I've tried things like med uh, meditation, medication, um, and that 
like they have their degrees of success but i found that uh the meditation seems to last pretty well but that's also in part because i'm using breath work with that so yeah. it's not just like oh quiet the mind and we're good it's like there's something going on with the body too mm -hmm. and so that's mm -hmm. what you were saying with that somatic experience yeah um, exactly exactly and, it, and i love meditation meditation is mm -hmm. fantastic in fact um my past birthday um i went to joe dispenza for the first time and oh. he is amazing I, I cannot recommend highly enough um but i'd always kind of had a block about meditation because mm -hmm. my, my mind is always going five different directions all at once like i would sit mm -hmm. there and i would be meditating and i'm counting my breath so one mm -hmm. one level of thought i'm counting then the next thought i'm hearing music I'm hearing, you know, all sorts. And then a third level, I, I'm still thinking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, this is it. That, the cool thing with breath work is that mm -hmm. uh, in the somatic transformational kind, which there are many, many different kinds, and they're all valuable. Mm -hmm. But in this specific type of breath work journey, um, you actually do really fast breathing where you're mm -hmm. exhaling, getting off excess CO2. Ah. Um, which is interesting. So what, what it actually does, and when you have decreased CO2 in the blood, it makes your vessels constrict. Hmm. And so it actually constricts the vessel temporarily. It's not like you're turning your brain off forever, but it turns off your monkey mind. It turns off that frontal lobe that keeps thinking, which for me was so difficult to do. Like no matter yeah. what I tried to do, I could not, I just kept thinking on it for, and I would think about thinking. I mean, it was just, I could mm. not turn it off. <laughs> But with breath work, it actually turns it off so you can get to that meditative state a lot easier than meditation. Not, not that I'm pro meditation, but mm -hmm. but yeah, breath work was like a secret workaround that I could get to that state um, without ha trying to quiet my mind. I could focus on the breathing and mm -hmm. that gave me the, you know, but it's intense breathing. Yeah, that... And see, that's really interesting that you brought that up because uh, I've been having some blocks in meditation myself lately. And I've kind of been wondering, like, what is that? Like, I know I've had this before and it's kind of one of those cycles. But I was like, there's got to be like a work around. It doesn't <laughs> have to is. just be something. Yep. And uh, so can you go into a little more detail of your uh, breathing that you did? Because uh, did you say it was aggressive breathing? So, well, aggressive probably makes it, that's not a good term. You need to come up with better. Um, like <laughs> better forceful. Maybe, it's intensive. But it's, it's intense. Intensive. So, okay. Yeah. Intensive. So, okay. So, all right. So breathe a little science here, right? So in mm -hmm. our nervous system, we kind of have two main branches. Mm -hmm. well, actually, where the branches is into, but anyway, there's all explained in my book where I go into the science <laughs> and the actual breath. But okay. we have our sympathetic side, which is our fight or flight side. And then we have mm. the parasympathetic side, which is our rest, digest, chill out side. Mm. And in modern society, most of us are hanging out all the time in the sympathetic. Mm. Where we're, we're, we actually, there's a huge problem that we're um, hyperventilating, that we're all breathing too fast, um, shallow chest breathing, and our CO2 level uh, is actually lower than it's supposed to be. Like our threshold for CO2 is actually lower than it's supposed to be, which causes all these chronic problems. Huh. Which is why it's interesting because um, like lots of the ancient breathing techniques, they're all like, never breathe through the mouth, never breathe <laughs> through the mouth. And there are a lot of reasons for that. Like we actually mm. don't want to be breathing through our mouth in our normal daily life. Our, mm. our nose actually produces nitric oxide, which is like a magical compound naturally in our body but you only get it when you breathe through your nose isn't that laughing gas oh or is no. that nitrous nitrous yeah. oxide oh so it's close. close it's close but this is no yeah oh nitrous. okay yep yep yeah and actually huh. they won a nobel prize for discovering it um, that's, so, that's so strange <laughs> <laughs> yep yep so um, lots of breathing techniques are, are focused on moving to the parasympathetic side. Mm -hmm. And I actually have a really cute, um, it's really short, it's like a two minute video where it's 90 seconds to calm. We're breathing in this, this rate, like if you text breath to 26786, so that's breath to 26786, you'd see this little two minute video where I'll breathe with you for 90 seconds and that'll change your state from the sympathetic to the parasympathetic. Huh. 
And it's all about the ratio. So it's all, uh-huh. you know, everybody gets hung up on this number, that number, you know, how many, oh, I'm forgetting what number. <laughs> Don't worry about it, right? As long as your mm-hmm. inhale is shorter than your exhale, like you could just breathe in for four and then breathe out for twice as long for eight. Like as long uh-huh. as your exhale is longer, that is what is a message. It tells your heart to tell your brain, you're chill. It's good. You're safe. Everything is a okay. You don't need to be freaked out right now. But most uh-huh. of us are not doing that. Our inhales are longer than our exhales. Mm-hmm. And we're just constantly in stress constantly. Like it makes the anxiety worse uh-huh. by how we're breathing. Uh-huh. So, uh, but the, Somatic transformational actually on Mm. purpose does the sympathetic state in a controlled manner, breathing in and out through the mouth for 45 minutes, which people freak out and like 45 minutes. Are you crazy? But actually holotropic breathing, which is a Mm. similar type of actually kind of like the granddaddy of a lot of this stuff. (laughs) um, Mm. They would do it for two to three hours. So 45 Mm. minutes is not even as as much as everybody, you know, freaks out Mm. about. But by being in that state for that long, it automatically gets you into that meditative state. And in that yeah. state, and this is what's really cool and different about the type that I do, you can actually change um, the dysfunctional patterns you have in your brain. So much of what we do is based on things we learned in childhood mm-hmm. um, before we were able to really figure stuff out, what was good for us, what wasn't. And at the time, that seemed like it was good for us. But as mm-hmm. adults, it's, it's not helping us anymore, <laughs> but we can't think our way out of it. Mm-hmm. But this is actually like a body hack, a brain hack on how we can get to that lower level to reprogram, refunction those patterns that are keeping us stuck. Wow. That's cool that, stuff. That is really interesting. Um, that kind of makes me wonder if it has anything to do with... Uh, the diaphragm uh, being one of the smooth muscles that we can actually control. I know. So that's actually it, the coolest thing. So do you realize that only human beings can do that? Really? Yeah. We are the only species on this planet who can actually control our breath. No way. I yeah. didn't know that. I didn't yeah. think about that. Yeah. Well, uh. in reality, most animals aren't sitting around thinking about everything. They're not they're mm-hmm. sitting there analyzing and figuring, you know, most of them are surviving and in, in the moment. Mm-hmm. And this this ability to control our breath uh-huh. is actually you know something I think we're on this earth to figure out because it's a way that we can control our state. We actually can become in control of our mental and emotional state by changing our breath using our own free will. That is really interesting. Yeah. So this goes a lot deeper than I even thought in in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Yep. Because it's always uh, kind of a laugh, you know, to go up to someone and be like, hey, uh, don't forget, you're breathing. And then they're well, conscious of it, and then mm-hmm. they can't, like, really shake it off. Mm-hmm. And so I didn't realize that that was, like, a human-only thing. I mean, like, it kind of makes sense because we're the ones that are, as far as we know, really sentient. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's a smooth muscle. The rest of our smooth muscles, we don't really control. And I I know that uh, breathing can affect uh, my heart rate, which, as you said earlier, it's uh, it tells the body to calm down. So it's almost like breath is the life of the body, like quite literally. In a sense, yeah. Well, I mean, think about it. That that's how we define our life, right? Mm -hmm. Our first breath to our Mm -hmm. last breath. That is our life. Yeah. Yeah. That's very true. Yeah. A very good point. (laughs) <laughs> um, so what is it that makes different types of breath work, uh, change different parts of the brain? Uh, and by that, I mean the somatic versus the parasympathetic, correct? Um, Sim- yep. Sympathetic versus parasympathetic. Yep, exactly. Um, well, so it's all about the ratio. So it's about mm-hmm. whether, whether the inhale is longer or shorter than the exhale. And the mm. holds count as part of that exhale. Mm. So, and that's okay. where you can shift from one to the other. So it's, gotcha. it's actually a great trick to use. If, if someone is in front of you and triggering the living crap out of you, one of the best things you can do is start doing a breath pattern. 
So, mm. um, you know, I describe one on the you know, breath two, six, seven, eight, six one, but it, another really popular one is called the box breath where box you breath. basically it's breathing like a box. So you breathe what? in, <laughs> it's breathing. So you breathe in for four, then you hold at the top for four, then you exhale for four, then you hold at the bottom for four. So you see, it's like a uh, little, little box and it's all fours. So it's because it's uh -huh. four sides to a box and you just mm. keep doing this, just keep doing this. Um, so while someone is screaming at you, if your in-laws criticizing you, if your kids are acting up or whatever's happening by going mm. into this thing, which they don't even know you're doing, which is a really mm. cool thing, then it keeps you calm. Because mm. most of the time when somebody's triggering us, it gets us all riled up. We get in that fight or flight state, right? And mm -hmm. in that state, it's quite possible something we don't want to fly out of our mouth is going to fly out of our mouth. Mm -hmm. And we may do something that we're going to regret later. Mm -hmm. But by purposely, on purpose, moving yourself to the parasympathetic state, just by doing this box breath, that you can do the one that I have on the video, the 446, um, mm -hmm. anything. Just, just breathe in and breathe out twice as long. Whatever you do, it'll work to help tell your brain, to tell to tell your heart, to tell your brain that, hey, it's okay. Then it gets you to the eye of the storm. Then when you mm. respond, you can respond from a place of calm. It also uh, gives you the power of the pause, right? It gives you the, mm -hmm. the power to pause before responding. Because most yeah. of us don't realize that, you know what? Nobody is due an immediate response from you. You know, yeah. that there is, there is a power in the pause. In fact, the more important the question somebody's asking you, the longer your pause should be. Like mm. It is okay to take your time and to respond from a place of calm, of in control. And it, it truly can change your life. Wow. That, yeah, I mean, that pause moment for sure definitely uh, comes into play in recovery a whole lot. And yep, absolutely. Uh, it's one of those things, again, that uh, is so just second nature that it's also not. Um, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's the whole thing about the breath. It mm -hmm. is part of it is just second nature, auto automatic. We're not thinking about it. But yeah, mm -hmm. we do have control over it, too. Yeah. So it, it's all a matter of choice and awareness. Very interesting because it does bring about that mindfulness aspect. And so mm -hmm. uh, for some people like myself, I could think myself into that anxiety loop because I was thinking about thinking, but you're saying that your breath work can actually stop, like just put a nail in that track right there. Yep. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. and you're saying double the exhale twice as long. And that's because it is increasing or decreasing the CO2. So um, when when we're doing the slower, more changing your state, we're not focusing as much. Well, mm -hmm. although it's still affecting the CO2. I mean, what, you know, a big thing is actually slowing our breathing and breathing less rapidly and in our chest, taking mm -hmm. deeper breaths into our belly and slower breathing mm -hmm. less so that we actually reset our CO2 threshold. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah. So which is a threshold. So, okay. So here, here's the science in this one. Okay. okay. So, um, all right. So when, um, so when you hold your breath, when you have that urge to breathe, what, what do you think is causing that? Uh, lack of oxygen. That's what most people say. So yeah. it is not lack of oxygen. So when, when you hold your breath, most people, um, most people as early as 20 seconds will be feeling like crap. I need to breathe. What the heck? I'm not breathing. You know, and you know, even the most healthy athletes, usually by 45 seconds, they're wanting to breathe. Mm -hmm. But if you actually check on a pulse ox machine, your oxygen is just fine. It's just dandy. It actually mm -hmm. takes around three minutes before your oxygen will actually go down. So that's not it. Your oxygen level is A-OK -okay in your blood. It's actually your CO2 level that Getting triggers right. that urge to breathe. That sense of air hunger comes from the CO2 level. Mm. So because we've been living in this stressful society and we've all been breathing too fast and shallowly in our chest, mm. we have reset our CO2 to a level that's, that's 
at the wrong point where if we just hold our breath for 20 seconds, already we're feeling like, oh crap, I got to breathe. <laughs> and we don't really like it's, it's really, uh, you know, the, the CO2 girl is actually one of the really makes us anxious and makes us feel we want to breathe. But they're actually, um, their techniques, you know, the breathe right, breathe light um, technique where you're teaching yourself to um, take low breaths and then cause this little bit of air hunger so you can reset that CO2 set gotcha. point. Yeah, yeah, and it actually, yeah, and it's, it's linked to all sorts of diseases by us breathing in this rapid thing. And breathing rapid like this actually triggers the sympathetic where we're just staying in sympathetic fight or flight all the time, which then causes more anxiety, which then makes us breathe faster. So it's just this circle loop where we're yeah. breathing fast and being anxious. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's a negative feedback loop uh, yeah, in that yeah, sense. Yeah, totally, yeah. Uh, um... Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of like cigarettes, where um, so everybody thinks that when they smoke a cigarette, it's making them calm, that that's helping their mm -hmm. anxiety. What mm -hmm. it actually is is withdrawal. So nicotine oh. is one of the most addictive substances on the planet. So when you're, um, it's been a little while since you had the last cigarette, then um, it's actually causing that anxiety. You're going through withdrawal mm -hmm. from the last cigarette. So then when you have oh. the next cigarette then you feel calm and you think it's, oh, it helped my anxiety. But no, it was really causing it. <laughs> the uh, lack of the nicotine was actually causing the anxiety that you think it then decreased. So. Oh, that's interesting. Cause I've always read that study that it does help decrease anxiety, but it's because they were already addicted to. It's because it's withdrawal. And, it, and yeah. it's, it's just getting out of the system that fast. Wow. Okay. Yep. yep. Um, and so also with what you were saying about uh, resetting our CO2 threshold, uh, kind of, uh, to me, it sounds like uh, we've conditioned ourselves to have this uh, natural, quote unquote, natural breath rate that is keeping us with elevated levels of uh, CO2 or oxygen or even nicotine and or, well, you know, everything else in the air. Um, but it's at a level that it's kind of like, to me, for some reason, I'm getting the analogy of like uh, putting nitrous oxide in a car or not nitrous. Is it nitrous oxide? NOS, you know, yeah, yeah uh, <laughs> to make it go super fast. It's like we're okay. keeping our bodies ready to just go, 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 go. And mm -hmm. sometimes we just need to, like you said, take that pause and stuff. And so yep. my question kind of is after doing breath work for long enough, does a breath pattern become second nature to where that's what you default to? Yeah, that's the whole goal. So like the breath work journeys, the breath work sessions, all these type of stuff. So that's kind of releasing. That's like releasing trapped traumas, unprocessed emotions, all this type of stuff. But mm -hmm. if if you're not changing how, you know, we're breathing every day, then mm -hmm. you're still going to have the anxiety. So uh, it's a matter of, of all the above. Of, of releasing the past traumas, but also changing our daily way of relating to, to life. Gotcha. Yeah. So it's kind of like if you were to stop doing your breath work, you might uh, have a relapse of sorts. Uh, kind of like if a uh, alcoholic such as myself stops doing the work of recovery, I might have a relapse uh, yeah. because I stopped doing what changed for the better. So. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Uh, <laughs> and it, yeah, and breathwork is used a lot in it, in addiction. Mm -hmm. So it, it's um, <laughs> I, I guess I'll, I'll go ahead and say a lot of a lot of um, you know recovering survivors of addiction um, consider breathwork. Um, they call it a free lapse. So <laughs> <laughs> I've I've heard that term. I Have didn't know that? exactly. I've heard it. I didn't know what they were talking about though. <laughs> yep, yep. Because it it because you know in every single a really important thing is every breathwork journey is different. It, it's mm -hmm. different not only for every person, but mm -hmm. each time you do it, each time it's different too. But yeah. you know, some people have really amazing experiences when doing these breathwork journeys. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> um, yeah. so we know that box pattern and the one that uh, comes from the video uh, 267678, was that it? 26786. Ah, dang dyslexia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
So, of course, you know a ton of other breathworks um, and stuff like that, but there's something about breathwork that seems universal. Uh, it seems like in every culture around the world, whenever we look at uh, the past, they talk about watching your breath. Um, yeah. And so it's interesting that it's something that everyone kind of knows. It's like it's in the subconscious uh, consciousness. Uh, and it's one of those things that it seems that we're going technology and convenience and society and we're kind of just going like and all the things that make us humans and who we are just kind of like toss it to the side which is really interesting um because you're sitting here you're uh kind of doing the exact opposite you're bringing people from this anxiety and stressful environment and you're bringing them back to almost nature i'd say like you're helping people find nature in the middle of a city like yep. that's yep. really exactly interesting right. yeah yeah it's interesting you say that too because grounding is really important i talk about mm -hmm. that too about yeah. um, you know because that's just it is we have all these modern things but you know, we're still you know animals in a planet with electrical charges and you know things that we had to do in a in human form mm -hmm. and that's another thing uh it's also become because of technology uh, a lot of people reverted to the if i can't see it i don't believe it kind of thing which this is why i love having doctors on because <laughs> y'all do studies y'all do research y'all have citation of like all these research articles that you can just sit there and you can start throwing graphs and pie charts out and it's great because it can make people see that there is something else because why would someone dedicate a large portion of their life to something that doesn't work? So yeah. it's just super amazing that you're doing this kind of thing because it is going to help the collective consciousness of mankind just yeah. take a breath. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> yep, exactly. Exactly. That's what we need to do. Yeah. Um, so what, plans do you have for moving uh your book forward kind of thing uh because you have uh this you have this text uh message video that people can send and just go along with it throughout the day they have a book what else do you do to help get people grounded and breathing properly um well i am um, about to launch a 90-day course um, on uh, beginning every day with breath work. And it, oh. that um, I'm, I'm really focused now on a, a quantum flow mastery. Ooh. So um, everybody talks about getting in the flow, right? Flow state. Mm -hmm. And most of the time when they're talking about flow state, they're, they're talking about um, like athletes or um, sometimes you could do it in video games. Like it, <laughs> it's this state where you're no longer thinking about me, me, me. You actually are focused on what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, so my, my vision, my, my hope is, is to teach people like a quantum flow mastery that you can do all the time where you're kind of in, um, I mean, technically it's like an alpha brainwave state mm -hmm. during your daily life when we still need to go to the higher brain state, the beta brain state, but to be able to access on will on command, this, this creative flow state um whenever we want mm. so. does it kind of feel like a little switch in the back of your head whenever you hit that right right okay when you now or just like you are in alignment you have got it you are nothing can can take you down you know it, mm. it's you you are ready for anything that comes at you so it's 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 really about i mean you know as we talked about about being meditation being in the moment mm-hmm so, but you can actually use the breath as a hack to get you in that moment. That so. is way too cool. Uh, yeah. So are you leading this 90 day course like in person or is it like a video so, series? Or? Yeah, so it, it's it's uh, videos, it's audios and it's uh, live sessions. Sweet, that yeah. is going to be way too cool. Uh, how can people sign up for this? Because I know there's going to be people listening to this that are going to be like, She's got what I need. I want it now. <laughs> um, it's going to be on the breathmd.com. All right. The breathmd.com. Uh, and when do you start this uh, adventure? 
Um, uh, the, the course is probably going to be starting uh, December. December. Ooh, yeah. so some people can have it their New Year's resolution. To they could. They could. Have it. Yeah. Ooh. So <laughs> yeah, in fact, wanna... actually, I probably should start it like January 1st. It is probably the best time to start a 90-day course. Yeah, I mean, that is a good idea, and we can hype it up until then, uh, okay. because, I mean, everyone makes New Year's resolutions, right? right. Uh, I, right. I want to go to the gym, I want to start eating healthier, this, that, or the other, and those kind of things usually require going somewhere, doing something a little bit different, and changing up a routine that might be a little bit too much. Right. Uh, because I've always noticed that for myself, I whenever I did my step four, I actually said I have a resentment towards New Year's because nothing ever, <laughs> nothing ever changed. It, it was always yeah. just back to the normal. And yeah. in recovery, I learned that it's because you take it one day at a time. You don't sit there and look exactly. at the whole year. Yeah. And so now with breath work, you don't have to go to the gym. You don't have to read the labels on packaging of food. You can just sit there and you can be in the middle of traffic in the worst traffic jam ever, and you can practice your breath work. Exactly and, right. Yeah. You take your so, breath wherever you go. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. And if you leave your breath work at home, uh, you don't have to turn around to go get it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's exactly right. Yep. So that is way too cool. Um, and I mean, just this holistic approach is something that I've seen be... Uh, it seems like it's actually getting a major foothold uh, whenever it comes to mental health, especially yep. because uh, medications, they have their place. Don't get me yep. wrong. Yeah, absolutely. But I think it's kind of like what you said at the very beginning, you're tackling the root of it. You're getting right. to where something is going on. You're not saying, Oh, here's uh, take two of these every day, one in the morning, one at night, you'll be fine. And then right. if you've run out of medication, you can't pay for the medication, you're kind of screwed, you know, eh, you're not doing that. You're saying, let's figure out a way for your body to calm down enough so that your mind can take care of the issue. Uh, and uh, this whole holistic approach, like what you're doing, is just, it's refreshing because I wanted to not get help because I was like, I don't want medication. I don't want medication. And had this been around whenever I was really about to fall into it, I think it would have saved my life, to be honest. Yeah, so, yeah, mm. absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and that that's part of it. I mean, I, and I think, I mean, that's kind of ha happening in the medical field is people are just waking up and realizing mm -hmm. that what we've been taught to do in medical school and our medical training, which is really just push more pills, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, they definitely can help people. I mean, I'd, yeah. you know, Prozac saved my life. Um, yeah. I was on it for over a decade, and um, but it, it truly did. It took me to a new level of existence that I didn't understand existed before. Like it actually mm. helped me to realize that, you know, all people are not evil and out to get me. You know, it, yeah. <laughs> it was good to, to realize that. But, mm -hmm. you know, after 10 years of being on it, I I just felt numb. Like I, mm. I no longer was in the depths of depression, but I, I also couldn't feel the joy of life either. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, so much of what we're all dealing with is our natural instinct to avoid pain. Like that's mm -hmm. a normal survival thing. But um, but by avoiding it, you know, we don't go through it and out and done with it. So, yeah. I mean, uh, so much so much of what's going on, too, is is um, so in the animal kingdom, mm -hmm. um, like if if a uh, like a gazelle. A gazelle is going through, it's being its little happy self. And then a cheetah comes along, right? And a cheetah mm. grabs the gazelle. So, um, you know, when, when we have a stressor, if someone comes into your house with a gun, then we immediately go into fight or flight, right? We get mm. ready and your body revs up this energy. It's ready. It's ready to fight, right? But mm. if you don't get to fight, if instead you freeze, which not mock, you know, freezing is sometimes very appropriate. Sometimes that's mm. the only thing we can do. That is our survival technique. But if you freeze, you don't discharge all that energy, right? Mm -hmm. So the gazelle, if it happens to get away um, after it's frozen, right, it will mm -hmm. sit there and shake. That's the normal thing of an animal is after the freeze straight, you get rid of that excess energy. Huh. But we humans don't do that. 
We trap hmm. it in our body and then it actually ends up causing disease and pain for years and years to come. Wow. And that's why with the breath work, we can actually access it and then let it go. Because, I mean, huh. if you were born on this earth, you have experienced trauma. Just being born mm. is a trauma. So, <laughs> and, and, and sometimes we don't even know what the traumas were. I mean, it could have happened before we even had known memories. You know, maybe at three mm. years old, you went to the dentist and it was a horrible experience. And you're still holding that on in your body because we mm. don't know how to discharge it. Yeah. So mm. our minds can say... I'm over it, but our bodies right. can be sitting there exactly. going, I remember. Exactly. That... Yeah, that, that's why I talk therapy. Like I would talk mm -hmm. and talk and talk about it, but it just never made it go away. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> that's interesting you say that uh, because it seems that dealing with the root issues on the physical level will sit there and completely reduce stress and it, that underlying anxiety because for me it always felt like someone is out to get me right. or that no matter what i was going to do i was going to be wrong or the worst case scenario no matter what and no matter what i told myself or works walked through it such a, like even if it was like look at all the other times i was anxious and it turned out just fine right but, but this is the time that it all goes to crap like you couldn't tell me otherwise um because right. you can't so, think your way out of it uh-uh. It's not going to work. <laughs> and so if breathing can access that little gate to say like, ah, uh, like epiphany, like it's okay. Yeah, like, that's what it does. Because <laughs> so many it, of my addiction patients, they're not, mm -hmm. they're not using to get high. They're, mm -hmm. they're using to get numb. Mm -hmm. They yeah. want to get away from their pain. I mean, mm -hmm. this is, they're just trying to do something about that feeling they can't get rid of. But this mm -hmm. could do it. Yep. Uh, and speaking from the addiction standpoint, it's a love-hate relationship. I love yeah. it because it makes me not feel the way that it's making me feel. And I hate it because the way that it makes me feel afterwards and everything right. else that goes along with it. Um, <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> but yeah. if breathwork can do so much for the mind and stress and anxiety, what else can breathwork do for the body? I mean, it can decrease pain. It decreases blood pressure. It decreases it increases um, the immune system. They, oh. They've actually found that chronic stress is literally killing us. It mm. is linked to seven leading causes of death, including cardiovascular disease with heart attacks, strokes, mm. um, lung disease, cirrhosis. Uh, it's associated with accidents and, and, I mean, even suicide. I mean, it, it's all related to chronic stress. And um, I mean, breath work is the way out. That's a way that we can take back control. So much of us feel like we're just victims to our emotions. We have this emotion come up and we just like feel like we had to wait till it goes away. Mm. But no, we don't. We actually have this amazing ability to control our breathing pattern, which then can control our life. Mm. That is way too cool. Yeah, and yeah it's cool. So whenever it comes to all of that, uh, oh, there was something you said that I was, I wanted to just ask it right away, but you almost answered the question. <laughs> so now the question is like, it was partially answered and it's not quite. Um, but with uh, this breath work, uh, it decreasing blood pressure and all this other stuff, it can lead to what people think is a problem but like you said it's actually treating the root of and right. uh chronic stress oh that's what it was chronic stress uh for some people they don't think that they're stressing because they say i'm just hustling i'm just on the grind all these other kind of things but really that is a really stressful um so yeah. chronic no. stress yeah oh, one of the ahead. easiest easiest ways to tell is mm -hmm. um so like fat in the belly, like mm. belly fat, that is directly related to stress. Really? Yeah. So that means your cortisol levels are too high. So these people are hustling or whatever. If they if they got a little beer belly, then no, they're living in, in a state of stress. Oh, man. That's interesting, though. So, and I guess if you look at it from that uh, lens, the obesity problem in America could be directly correlated with chronic stress. What, it, it definitely contributes. 
definitely contribute to it. I mean, our, our processed food with things that are not actually meant mm-hmm. for the human body has something to do with it too, but <laughs> that's a whole nother topic. That's a whole nother topic. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what are some of the things that you've seen just completely uh, alleviated from some of the people that uh, go through you for uh, finding new ways to breathe? Um, it, I mean, it's really good for phobias. It's really good for anxiety. It is, mm-hmm. It's really, really good for post-traumatic stress as well. Okay. Is it, it's a way okay. that you can release without having to go there, which actually can mm-hmm. re-traumatize people. Mm-hmm. Um, talking about it but just instead Mm -hmm. just releasing it but i mean you i mean technically you could do most anything so once once you do the the intense breathing and get into Mm -hmm. that meditative state in that state then you can talk about forgiveness then you can talk about Mm -hmm. you know joy you can talk about worthiness you can talk about self-love you can talk about Mm -hmm. there are so many different aspects that once you're in that state rewriting the script that we wrote as kids you know trying to protect ourselves but it's not serving us now Mm -hmm. and it's really interesting hearing you talk about all this uh and kind of going through the rolodex of other guests that i've had talking about uh neuro stuff because all of it is interconnected in some way so Mm -hmm. you've got a missing piece of the puzzle they've got missing pieces but yours is fundamental because without years the rest of the puzzle just doesn't really have glue of a sort right so in like we said before breath is life so uh you're sitting here and again you're making a way to where people have an access to a meditative state and they have an issue with going to therapy maybe they can't even afford it because it's expensive Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now you've made access to where people can help themselves, but they can go through someone that can walk them through because even though it sounds simple, there's still blocks to it because it sounds like we've forgotten how to breathe. It's not that it's not that we don't know how to, it's that we've forgotten how to. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So, um, man, there's just so many other questions that i forgot to like oh there's one there's one uh i spoke to someone that was talking about the ph uh in the blood Mm -hmm. now you're talking about co2 levels yeah this affects the ph too yep absolutely absolutely does it can (laughs) move you into an easier state it actually helps um the red blood cells get the oxygen into the cells Mm -hmm. Um, and that's with the nitric oxygen and the co2 so um, ah. yeah, this all affects. It's all related. I mean, just like you just said a second ago, it is all related. Yeah, this is way too cool. And mm-hmm. uh, so you've been doing this for about seven years. Was yeah, that right? It, yep, I've been about that long. I think that is way too cool. Um, and hopefully, you plan to keep going with this, right? Absolutely. Cause... Yeah, I'm on a mission. I, I really my my goal is is to you know, get this information out there so that breath work becomes just a household word. I mean, yeah. breath work is really on the rise. Like it, it's, mm-hmm. they're now describing it as um, where yoga was 15 years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. See, I, I guess I just live underneath a rock. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, you're already doing it. You're already doing the work. Well, but you're shedding a whole new light on it. Um, so that's the thing is that I love to dive down rabbit holes. If I see a rabbit, I will go like, I wonder where this Alice in Wonderland story is going to go. And that's the thing is that each story has all these other stories that interconnect. And Mm -hmm. yours just seems to have one that is probably going to be the most expansive of them all, I'd say, because it deals with the body directly but on the subconscious level, because it's that smooth mm-hmm. muscle, it's that one that we're not supposed to be able to control. Mm-hmm. But for some reason, our brain says, I got it. <laughs> and yep. and so I was talking, uh, whenever I was on a walk earlier this morning, uh, my wife, uh, she said her nose is running. And I said, well, put your foot out to trip it, you know, to catch it. And it's kind of <laughs> like, it's kind of like uh, what we're doing with breath work. Uh, 
we're kind of just catching it and saying like hey lungs like diaphragm right. lungs just slow down guys like you don't have to run the whole time right and it's just something that i think people's lungs have been telling them for a while that hey you need to use me a little bit better mm -hmm. but we haven't really mm -hmm. been listening to our body so what's a way our body kind of tells us we need to work on our breathing a little more are there well, any signs yeah yeah for sure well just being in the chronic stress right mm, so mm -hmm. um most of us are hanging out in the sympathetic state all the time which mm -hmm. you know the, the sympathetic state i mean don't get me wrong we need it you know if, the, if mm -hmm. there's a bear chasing you you want to be able to go into the <laughs> sympathetic state right yeah. but, but the issue is is when our body repairs itself when it mm -hmm. restores that's when it's in the parasympathetic and if we mm. spend all of our time freaking out in fight or flight, then we're never getting the repair. We're never getting mm. the restore. And that's why we get sick. Ah. Yeah. That's interesting. So it kind of goes in line with our bodies have cycles. Um, yes, exactly and... right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So we're sitting there forcing our body out of the regenerative cycle mm -hmm. without even knowing it. Mm -hmm. That is interesting. That would explain why it's easy to fall into chronic stress too. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not just the lifestyle of the society around us. It's that we're pushing ourselves to. Well, I mean, you know, talking about addiction too, uh -huh. you can be addicted to the stress hormones. Oh. You are used to being this chronic whatever. And uh -huh. then in fact, that's one thing that, um, so there's a coherent breathing where you breathe in for five and out for five. It's actually, mm -hmm. they, they found the perfect rhythm is 5.5 second inhale, 5.5 second exhale, puts your, your heart and your brain in coherence. And it causes mm -hmm. this really cool state that, you know, we all want to try to get to. But when uh -huh. I first started doing that, like mm -hmm. I, I lived in stress. Stress was my world. Like and <laughs> when I would try to do that, where I'd breathe in for five and then I would breathe mm -hmm. out, I would feel anxious at the end of the <laughs> exhale because it felt too long. Oh, I mean, it felt, I, I could tell that, no, I have always been in this chronic stress. And then uh -huh. for a lot of people going into calm doesn't feel right because mm -hmm. we've conditioned our mind that we're supposed to always be on going, 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 going. And so we never even take the time because we're addicted to being in that state mm -hmm. and it doesn't feel right unless we are. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Cause I've definitely had that issue where, uh, early in recovery, everything's starting to come down. My life is starting to get better. And right. I'm just like, when is this going to get like something like it, something's not right. Like, right. It, it, and I give it a couple of days and it's like, everything's still fine, but I'm sitting here going like, no, the shoe's going to drop. I don't know when, but it's coming. Right. You know, right. And part of that and, is we're conditioned for the dopamine release. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, when, when you're coming, you know, getting sober, you're not getting that constant, you know, mm -hmm. hit of dopamine. And so then everything, and that's what happens with a lot of addicts too. It's like mm -hmm. life is just too boring. I don't, get you yeah. know nothing's exciting or whatever but that's just mm. it just like we're talking about resetting the breath you've got to reset your brain to find dopamine releases in in everyday things instead of you know <laughs> yeah. like uh waking up and taking that first big breath in the day there you go um, there you go yeah and so it also kind of goes right back to the whole you can sit there and tell yourself that everything's fine and that I don't have any reason to worry. And even if you're working on your breath work, you can still have obstacles doing it because it just doesn't feel right. right. And so that stress hormone, are you saying that that's not just a mental, but a physical addiction of a sorts too? Uh, yes, maybe 100%. That, that's that so we have weird. conditioned our body that we don't feel right unless we're getting excess cortisol, you know, epinephrine, we're getting all adrenaline up and all this type of stuff. And if we don't mm -hmm. have that going on, we feel like something's wrong because we're so used to that being how we feel. Mm. Like some of us just don't, you know, it feels weird to be calm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm right there with you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I know with some of my meditations, uh, like you can have certain hand signs or something to help guide your mind uh, to certain uh, directions. And so you have different breath 
patterns and stuff kind of like what you were saying mm -hmm. um but with all of that uh where did that thought just go i'm sorry <laughs> sometimes i do have bunnies that just i think they're hedgehogs they just go whoop, whoop. um <laughs> no worries uh um do 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 um yep nope that thought's gone um uh, <laughs> the, the train the train has left the station um <laughs> but with all of this being said what are some oh that's what it was uh so there are certain hand signs and stuff so with some of the breath patterns or breath works that you do are there certain things that you do with your body because your mind yeah. might be telling your yeah. brain to do something else and it's like there you're yeah. there should be a way that your body can tell your brain that it's okay without you know what i'm trying to get at right yeah for sure <laughs> and actually that's really um something too that i'm wanting to develop too which is mm. a course on um breathing and movement mm. so and it um they do that a lot i mean you do that with yoga you do that with qigong um but there there are lots of um the movement with the breath and then mm. integrating the body, really getting into the body, and then grounding too. So, mm. um, yeah, that, that's definitely things on the horizon that I plan okay, to sweet. be educating about as well. Yep. Sweet. So you'll have another 90-day course on that then. I once will. You get that I will. Yep. Sweet. <laughs> uh, so can you remind us again uh, where we can find your course once you get it up and going? Um, it's going to be at thebreathmd.com. The and breath. then you can also go there to, to the website to get my breath, my new book. It's called Breath, the Remote Control to Inner Calm. Ooh, I like uh, that. And, it, and since like over 80% of people are visual, I have lots of pictures in here too. It has pictures. Yep. Lots of pictures. <laughs> yep. That so. is way too cool. Uh, I know I'm going to have to order myself a book and anyone else that is listening and or watching because this is on youtube too y'all better get this book because it's going to change your life because trust me breath work it does wonders so uh if you don't believe me listen to someone that's like got a <laughs> doctorate in it for crying out loud because uh, <laughs> it's just so it, it's hard telling people like this stuff works it's just you got to give it a chance yeah. And it's also more of a process, not a pill. So it's going to take exactly. a little bit of time. Exactly. It doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. So. Well, and one thing too, and, and this is on the little bitty uh, video, at the breath 26786, which is you have to do it at least 90 seconds. Mm -hmm. People are like 90 seconds, you know, and 90 seconds is longer than you think. So if you mm -hmm. need to get out a stopwatch to make sure you actually did it for 90 seconds, you should do that because, you know, sometimes it could take five minutes. You know, the five mm -hmm. minutes are going to go by whether you're doing this, you know, doing a box breath or doing a four, four, six or whatever. The five minutes go by either way. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be nice to just do the breathing during those five minutes and you'll be much less anxious, much less stressed at the end of those five minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I do want to retract what I said to how everyone's looking for that faster kind of thing. Well, with the holistic stuff, it looks like breath work is the way to go because you can access <laughs> it whenever, wherever. Yeah. And that's what's wonderful about it. So for some reason, it just seems like what you're, uh, what you're developing, what you are exploring and researching is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's going to be at a point to where people are going to, like yogis are going to be like hey do you have a good idea for a new breath technique i'm trying to get to the third chakra <laughs> <laughs> you know? indeed yep yeah so um here on retrieving sanity i do like to get guests on uh, a couple of times uh so we can catch up uh in a few months you know see yeah, what's great. changed what's changed in your world what you figured out uh we can see you how breathwork has affected me uh, with some of the things that I'll read from your book. And so I would like to have you back on. Uh, can we see? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what should we talk about next time? I mean, it's going to be breathwork, but do we want yeah. to get specific about anything in particular? Well, so in a few months, uh, my 90 day course will be out. And so uh -huh. we actually can talk about um, like quantum flow. How, quantum do you, how do you use flow. the breath 
Quantum Flow Mastery is going to be the name of my course. Awesome. Yeah. Quantum Flow Mastery. It just sounds so Marvel esque. I love it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but we will. Uh, let's see. Any. We're at the 55 minute mark. So after editing a little bit of stuff, uh, we got just a few minutes. You got any shout outs you want to do for yourself or any loved ones and all that? Um, for sure. I, I'm very grateful awesome. to my amazing husband who is so incredibly supportive, Chad. Um, so he's Chad May and, uh, my, uh, a lot of my medical stuff is under Leslie. So, mm. um, but I have added the May as we have recently, uh, gotten married and congratulations. Um, yeah. Yeah. He's the love of my life. <laughs> it's fantastic. Yep. He's That's very awesome. good. And to my kids and to my mom, who's always been very supportive too. So it's good stuff. My dad. That's awesome. <laughs> yep. Well, I'm glad that you have such a great support network and uh, you've got retrieving sanity behind you as well. So. Aw, thank you. Uh, <laughs> this has been course. a really fun interview too. Thank you. Oh. Well, I'm glad you've enjoyed it because I enjoy it. Uh, I like having candid conversations because, uh, you know, bullet point little interviews the it's like i going to school like for a, a test like woo <laughs> 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 i like to have fun uh it, it's something that i love to see the passion in people's eyes whenever they talk about uh what they do and how it helps them and especially how it helps others because i've not really talked to someone that's been like oh i did it all for me and this is blah 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 like I've talked to people that have gone through their story of addiction, but that's their personal story. Everyone else is like, nope, I'm doing this because I'm trying to help people. And that is the world I want to be in. Mm -hmm. So I love this. Yeah. Uh, and I'm glad that you're a part of it. So yeah, good stuff. <laughs> um, but well, we'll go ahead and end this episode here. I'll stop the recording. Um, and until then, thank you for listening on WDJY FM. Uh, this has been Keegan on Retrieving Sanity with a uh, very special guest, uh, Dr. Jeannie May. <laughs> so uh, we will catch you all with Dr. Jeannie May next time. I'm not sure exactly when, but check us out at retrievingsanity.com uh, or on Facebook, and you should be able to find updates on Facebook at least. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, with that being said, uh, Y'all have a wonderful rest of your day, and I uh, will see y'all next week. Shalom.